स्थापकाय च धर्म सेवधर्मस्वे अवतार वरिष्ठा राम कृष्णा ते नम सो एज यू सीन वील बी डिस्कसिंग द थ्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स ऑफ द माइंड बट बिफोर दैट सिंस ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट टॉक मेनी सेड दैट द थ्री लेवल्स ऑफ द माइंड स्पेशली द सबकॉन्शियस माइंड विच वी हैड बीन डिस्कसिंग इज नॉट क्वाइट क्लियर वील जस्ट रिकैप्चुलेट प्लस uh have a look at some other details of that so as we had seen last time vedanta studies the mind particularly as the seat of impressions hmm. that is the most important thing our impressions or sanskaras so these impressions are left on the on the mind not only by the perception of objects but also through our activities so just as the perception through cognitions leave impressions of the mind similarly the experiences through the organs of actions also leave an impression on the mind we see something some impression is left on the mind we do something we speak something we hold something everything creates an impression on our minds and these impressions create tendencies these govern our whole nature these impressions create tendencies create our disposition hmm. and these impressions live within us in our minds so the mind is a huge storehouse almost infinite capacity hmm. all the impressions through all our previous lives in this life and in future lives also they will all remain in the mind hmm, till we attain freedom this we had seen last time okay so when we were discussing the three levels we had seen that all the impressions are not on the surface of the mind always we had seen the example of a lake so in a lake suppose you throw a stone the stone creates a ripple the ripple dies out that ripple is like our thought wave whenever we see something we do something there is a ripple created in our mind that ripple is called a vritti so now when a stone is thrown after the ripple subsides what happens to the stone it does not disappear it goes to the bottom of the lake and stays there similarly whatever creates an impression on our mind any thought any activity it creates a vritti a thought wave but even after the thought wave has subsided that impression does not disappear if it had disappeared then there would be nothing known as memory hmm. memory means what we recall those things again what we did what we saw this means that they were in their mind somewhere so just like a stone remains on the bottom of the lake similarly all those impression remain on a lower level of the mind so that we are not aware of them always that lower of lower level of the mind is called the subconscious level of the mind that we have seen last time also so 
actually we can see very little of our minds all our thoughts ideas feelings etc they are always not manifest on the surface of the mind hmm. so these things which we experience where did they go all our experiences they go to a lower level of the mind and this lower level is called the subconscious mind okay now <clears throat> what is the difference between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind difference is very simple the conscious level means within the range of our ego consciousness ego consciousness means what this i so whatever is within the range of this i currently now i i see that i see all of you sitting here hmm. this is within the ego range because my i is connected with that so it is on you know on the conscious level but suppose now i shut my eyes and try to recall what was the situation here yesterday so that is not on the conscious level right now but when i try to recall it will come from the subconscious mind then i will re my memory will tell me nobody was here yesterday hmm. so that was there in the mind but it was on a lower level when it comes to the upper level my eye is connected with that i feel what i feel i remember hmm. i saw it i did this i did that so whenever we recall those things or we presently when we do things when the eye is connected with any impression it is obvious that it is on the surface level of the mind so that small portion with which we connect our ego consciousness that is called the conscious level and that which is below outside the range is called the subconscious mind so that is very simple now most of the unmanifest impressions lie dormant at the bottom of the mind they affect neither the conscious mind nor our behavior as long as they remain dormant they are inactive so to say now suppose what i had done last year now i try to recall when i had come to canada two years before etc etc so those impressions before i recall them before i recall they are absolutely dormant they are not bothering me in any way they are quietly sitting there but as soon as i recall then suppose i had a pleasant experience when i entered canada then that will disturb me that will give rise to a wave or if i had some uh, unpleasant experience or pleasant experience those will give oh I, i feel pain when i think of suppose something had happened so this means what when they are dormant they are okay but as soon as they come to the surface level they start producing the vrittis or thought waves and then they begin to influence us not before hmm. so all the good things as well as not so good things everything is there in the subconscious mind hmm. so till they are dormant no problem but when they become active then we then we feel that good thoughts are coming or contrary thoughts are coming etc etc hmm. and according to the vedanta there is also the super conscious state that is when we realize spiritual truths so that is okay that is uh, we have already discussed that so last time what people found a little difficult to grasp was the impressions how they stay in the subconscious mind okay so just we will go into a little detail and we will just recapitulate so the unmanifest impressions lie in the subconscious mind below the ego consciousness in three different forms 
we had already discussed in a general way today we just see the detail so here you can see the image i will just share the image you can see the image here and i will share with you with her online participants also <clears throat> so here you can see now in conscious level there is no problem you can see here that on the conscious level the impressions stay in only one form that is the expanded form or active form they are active they are having full play no problem at all so in a conscious mind there is no problem but subconscious mind these impressions stay in three different ways you can see here we will discuss each one of them in a little detail so i hope today it will be absolutely clear so the first form is called the torment or prasupta form hmm. now in sanskrit supta is means sleeping simple so prasupta means they are as it were sleeping they are dormant dormant means what they are not yet active although they have the power to become active so when a man is sleeping it is not that all his powers have gone when he wakes up he becomes the same man again his energy is there so these impressions which are in the prasupta form exactly same thing they have full potential energy but they are just dormant so sometimes we tell no the swami ji has explained this very beautifully we say oh innocent as a baby a baby is very innocent but hitler was also once a baby hmm so what happened those impressions were there those bad impressions were there but when he was a baby that time was not proper for manifestation so when circumstances came and the time came all those evil things became manifest so these come out by degrees whenever the proper time comes proper opportunity comes similarly for good things ravi shankar beethoven all those they were children before hmm when they grew up all those wonderful talents ex found expression hmm so this is called prasupta means dormant okay now one thing we have to understand one thing which may be a little it will seem odd but according to yoga according to yoga philosophy all these impressions are actually causes of suffering they are called obstacles because in the final state our aim is to still the mind completely and whenever there is an impression on the mind they will give rise to thought waves and we have seen that the definition of yoga is chitta vritti nirudha all the thought waves have to be stopped so all these impressions they are called in sanskrit klesha indian bengali those who know they are familiar with this word klesha means pain hmm. but those who are not familiar klesha has been is a technical term klesha is called pain bearing obstruction so i will again just share with you it becomes clear so this klesha means 
pain, pain bearing obstruction. So you can see here also. Hmm. I have tried to uh, give images for everything so that there will be no confusion this time, I hope. Mm. Now, according to yoga, there are five kleshas. Mm. We will come to that later. Five primary kleshas which give rise to suffering. Mm. That uh, Abhinivesha uh, and uh, all these are there. Abhid that there are called five types of avidya. Mm. So, in English, we can translate as ignorance, egotism, attachment, aversion, and clinging to life. These are the five kleshas. So, these tie us down, tie the soul down to matter. And these are nothing but sanskaras or impression. Mm. So, the sanskaras may be dormant, may be attenuated, may be overpowered or expanded. They are all kleshas. Okay. So first in the expanded form, they are in the conscious mind. And we have seen that in the subconscious mind, these kleshas or impressions exist in three forms. Prasupta, Vichinna and Tan. Prasupta we have seen. So in Sanskrit, for those who know Sanskrit, I don't want to deny them. So we'll just, uh, uh, from the original sutras, we'll just see a few lines. That dormant kleshas, prasupta kleshas, how do they define? They say, tatra ye klesha chitta bhuma chitta. They remain on the chitta bhumi, hmm, on the mind. But, Prabodhaka abhave, there is no prabodhaka means there is nothing to awaken them. Hmm. So prabodhaka abhave, swakaryam na arabhante. They don't start their work because the time is not come yet. Hmm. What are these called? Te prasupta iti uchyate. They are called prasupta. Hmm. So they are there, but the time has not yet come for them to manifest. Okay. So he gives an example, Yatha Bala Avasthayam, as in childhood. Hmm. So all these impressions even reside in a child in the form of instincts. But for want of an exciting cause, they remain dormant. So they remain in the mind, in the potential state. Now we come to the next form that is overpowered. Hmm. So overpowered means what? It is very simple. When one set of impressions are stronger than another set of impressions, they overpower those impressions. It is as simple as that. Now, suppose I am thinking of someone, a, a person is thinking of someone whom he doesn't like. So in his mind, he is thinking, he is becoming angry, etc, etc, etc. So that feeling of hatred is coming. Suddenly, a, the young child of that person walks into the room, he sits on his lap. As soon as the child sits on his lap, what happens? The father, there is the feeling of love. So his feeling of hatred goes down for the time being. Why? Because the feeling of love has overpowered that feeling. But it is only temporary. It has not decreased his hatred or anything. If that child goes away, and that person whom he doesn't like comes, everything will come up again. So this we have to remember. In overpowered state, one set of impressions overpower another set of impressions. Love may overpower hatred. Hatred may overpower love. But it is not voluntary. It just happens. And 
the impressions which are overpowered they don't lose their force or power just for some time like i have given the example of a spring spring when we push like this we are opposing the spring so that force pushes the spring but as soon as you let go spring comes back to the same condition so this is called the state of being overpowered hmm. so i will again share the image so it becomes clearer <clears throat> first i will share the dormant image and then the overpowered image so here you can see the dormant image hmm. <clears throat> what is dormant obstructions all these are obstructions as i have told you dormant obstructions remain in the mind in a potential state these awaken in time when they turn towards their objects we have already discussed this after this comes overpowered which we have just discussed here you can see sometimes one set of impressions is held down for a while by those that are stronger but they come out when that repressing cause is removed these are called overpowered impressions hmm. so <clears throat> this i think is absolutely clear now so just uh, a little of the sanskrit commentary overpowered means in sanskrit they are called vichinna Hmm. we have seen here so what do the commentators say explaining this te vichinna ye means those are called vichinna uh, those impressions which kena chit balavata kleshena abibhuta so all these are kleshas they are all obstructions but what are the overpowered obstructions kechid balavata means even stronger impressions abibhuta they overpower those impressions hmm. so te vichinna ye kenachid balavata kleshena abibhuta shaktayas tishthanti by that overpowering power they just remain quiet for the time being yatha dvesha avasthayam rag when there is hatred the feeling of love goes down or rag avasthayam dvesha simple hmm. so at one time our mind cannot have these two hmm. nahi anayo paraspara viruddhayo yugapat sambhava asti yugapat means at the same time so when these two contrary impressions are there they cannot be in the mind at the same time so when one comes up it, another is overpowered when another comes up the first one is overpowered so in simple words this is this is the explanation of overpowered impressions they are overcome for the time being by a stronger impression stronger passion or stronger thought you can say so they are just suppressed but they will come back again that is the thing so they do not assert themselves for the time being but we should not think that they have gone away so if we keep our undesirable things in a just a overpowered state that is not a very safe state because they are very powerful they can come up any time and make our life hell hmm. so all of us have some dark forces within us and they lie overpowered because of circumstances hmm. so suppose you say from tomorrow in british columbia for one one day there will be no police no law and order do whatever you want 
and no one will be held responsible for what they do. Hmm. So what will happen in those 24 hours you can imagine. Why? Because the fear that repressing thing, fear of police that has gone. Hmm. So all the clashes, all the obstructions which are there, now they have a time for free play. Hmm. So actually what happened? Those impressions were there. They were just held down due to fear. So that is not a safe state. For a spiritual aspirant, that is not safe because they can come any time again. So what do the spiritual aspirants have to do? We come to the next one now, the third one. Those forces, we, our, our job is to make them weak. If they become weak, they will not go away. Those impressions cannot go away. But if they become very weak, they will be within our control. We will not be within their control. In good persons, in good persons, all those impressions are weak. Hmm. Suppose something is lying on the road, some expensive thing is lying on the road. Hmm. A person who is not so cultured, not so habituated to doing good deeds, if he sees that, if he sees nobody is around, he will take it and be off. But same thing, if a good person sees, he will try to find out who it belongs to, try to return it. If he cannot do, he, will, he won't touch it. Why? Because those impressions, although they may be there in him also, but they are within his control. He will not let them overpower him. That feeling of greed, it is within his control. That is the aim of all yogis, all spiritual aspirants. So what does he do? It is a process. Now what we may do unconsciously, the yogi does consciously. And what is that process called? That process is called Pratipaksha Bhavana. Before understanding the next state, the weakened state, we have to understand this Pratipaksha Bhavana. What is Pratipaksha Bhavana? Hmm. So, we will just discuss it a little. So, Pratipaksha Bhavana is a yogic practice outlined in the yogic scriptures in which yogis deliberately they discontinue negative ways of thinking by creating the opposite feeling. So this concept of Pratibhaksha Bhavana states that if one's thoughts are negative or violent or unkind, he can immediately begin to create thoughts which are positive, non-violence and of kindness. Okay. So in the Yoga Sutras, the Sutra is Vitarka Badhane Pratipaksha Bhavanam. Means to obstruct thoughts which are not good for us, which are inimical to the practice of yoga, contrary thoughts have to be brought. This is done deliberately by spiritual aspirants. Hmm. So Swami Vivekananda explains this. For example, when a big wave of anger comes to the mind, how are we to control that? Just by raising an opposite wave. Think of love. Hmm. Suppose a mother is very angry with her husband. And while in that state the baby comes and she kisses the baby, the old wave dies out and a new wave arises, which is love for the child. Hmm. So this thing the yogi does consciously. That is the thing. He weakens his wrong thoughts consciously by contrary efforts. A problematic thought arises Immediately we try to find out what is the contrary thought and we bring that thought. 
so by these systematic efforts over time what happens is those bad thoughts since they are not encouraged they become weaker and weaker and weaker if you spoil someone if you give him indulgence that tendency will become stronger some parents spoil their children how when a children asks for some when the child asks for something they give it without thinking whether it will be good or bad for the child so one day you do that two day you do that when you keep on doing that the child will slowly go beyond your control because you have encouraged that tendency but when you don't encourage it once or twice the child will ask you after that when it knows it it won't get anything it will quiet down exactly the same thing happens here also when those tendencies which are not good when they are not encouraged they become weaker and weaker and weaker hmm and they die down so doing this consciously is called pratipaksha bhavana in yogic language yogic parlance so again i will share the image so that you can easily grasp it so you can see here pratipaksha bhavana hmm what is it in simple language bringing contrary thoughts that's all now the most important thing which i stressed also last time we can say that in overpowered state also one set of impression is stronger and it subdues the other impression and in pratipaksha bhavana also one set of impressions is stronger and it subdues the other impression so what is the difference there are two main differences first is in overpowered state it is not done consciously it just happens hmm. so the passion which was overpowered it goes down but it remains as strong as before it is it has not weakened but in pratipaksha bhavana this opposite thought is brought consciously again and again and again and the result is the contrary impressions become weaker and weaker and weaker hmm. so these impressions when they become weak that is the third stage that is called the tanu tanu or attenuated or weakened state hmm. so again i'll share the image you can see here <clears throat> so in front of you it is there this is the tanu or attenuated state so these impressions contrary impressions are attenuated or weakened by spiritual practices japa meditation thinking of god all these are creating good impressions and weakening the bad ones hmm. this means that they exist in a very fine state and the yogi can now control them that is the main thing. so these are the three forms in which the impressions our impressions exist in the subconscious mind hmm. so just for those who are interest, interested in sanskrit what do the commentators say te tanavo ye means those are in tanu avastha which 
स्व स्व प्रतिपक्ष भावनया बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग प्रतिपक्ष भावना अगेन एंड अगेन शिथिली कृत शिथिल मीन्स वीक ते तनवो ये स्व स्व प्रतिपक्ष भावनया शिथिली कृत कार्य संपादन अशक्त यो दे कैनॉट डू देर वर्क बैड इंप्रेशन सपोज द इंप्रेशन ऑफ स्टीलिंग इज देर सो इट हैज बीन मेड सो वीक इट हैज नॉट बीन इंडल्ज इन इट हैज बीन मेड सो वीक दैट इन गुड पर्सन इट विल नेवर बी एबल टू डू इट्स वर्क मीन दे विल नेवर स्टील सो इवन दो इज इंप्रेशन मे बी देर but it is as good as non existing because it will never be able to do its work it has become so weak hmm. suppose you have a pet kitten or dog or something you don't give it food for many many days so poor fellow what will happen <laughs> it will lie there but if some robber enters that dog won't be able to do anything because it has become so weak so similarly we have to do the same things with our bad impressions to make them so weak that we are in full control hmm. yatha abhyasavato yoginah abhyasavato by practicing again and again that is what happens in the case of yogis all the impressions become weak or tanu because they are overpowered in their effort to perform their रिस्पेक्टिव फंक्शन बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग प्रतिपक्ष भावना मीन्स बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग कॉन्ट्ररी इंप्रेशन विच आर गुड इंप्रेशन सो वी हैव फेयरली इन अ डिटेल वे वी हैव डिस्कस्ड आई होप टूडे शुड बी एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर दीज थ्री स्टेट्स इन विच इंप्रेशन लाय इन आवर सबकॉन्शियस माइंड okay so in the time remaining we will just discuss the three constituents of the mind it won't take much time because we have discussed it in another uh, context when we discussed the sankhya philosophy so <clears throat> those things we will just recapitulate that what are the constituents of the mind what is the mind made up of sankhya says that the constituent of the whole universe of matter is the same means my mind is made up of the same thing as this mouse is made up of or any other thing is made up of hmm. it is the same thing so what is the constituent the constituent is called gunas gunas means we have seen that prakriti the whole of prakriti is composed of prakriti means nature the whole of nature according to sankhya there are only two realities one is the soul purusha and the other one is prakriti so the whole of prakriti is composed of three gunas what what are they we know sattva rajas and tamas so what are these gunas these gunas are not qualities although we translate gunas as qualities but they are not qualities they are what the mind is made up of but they give rise to qualities so suppose in a person who has more of sattva guna this will give rise to qualities like calmness truthfulness bravery all these things so although gunas themselves are not qualities but they give rise to qualities hmm. that is the thing so gunas are a constitutional element or component and these gunas continuously change in our mind sometimes there is more of sattva guna hmm, then we are calm then the sometimes when there is more of rajoguna that is rajas we are active 
when the tamas tamas increases then we feel tired so it is change but in a man in each man there is one guna which predominates and that determines his nature so if we if we if we see a man is absolutely lazy hmm, we know that although he has sattva guna also but primarily he has ra, tamas tamo tamo guna if we if we see a man is tremendously active and although we know that there is tamas and sattva in him but rajas predominates and in spiritual aspirants and saints etc sattva guna predominates hmm. so what are the quality what are the qualities of these gunas they according to vidyaranya vidyaranya was the author of uh, the great treatise panchadashi that is the advaita treatise so he says non attachment forgiveness generosity etc are products of sattva desire anger avarice etc are products of rajas and lethargy confusion drowsiness are products of tamas so when sattva functions in the mind merit is acquired when rajas functions then demerit is produced and when tamas functions life is wasted for nothing you do nothing you are always sleeping like the kumbhakarna was there ravana's brother hmm, six months he used to sleep so the constitution of individual minds is determined by the various combinations and permutations of these gunas and this explains the varieties in human nature that is the thing so these gunas keep on change that is why sometimes we feel that we are feeling tired sometimes we are active sometimes we are calm etc etc Hmm. so naturally gunas are not perceived by us we cannot perceive gunas because they are so subtle hmm. but we know from the effects they produce hmm. as soon as activity predominates we feel active we know that from that we can infer that rajas has increased when we feel tired we cannot see that guna is increasing but we can feel tired so we know that tamo guna or the tamas has increased hmm. so how do the yogis how did they determine that these gunas are the constituents of everything in the universe that's a wonderful analysis brilliant analysis we had discussed that while discussing sankhya also so just we can recapitulate a little so that it becomes fresh now it is in our subconscious mind so when we discuss it it will come in the conscious mind hmm so sankhya says that all the objects in the world without exception they are capable of producing three reactions within us one even one object is capable of producing three reactions according to the circumstances what are those three reactions one is pleasure one is pain and one is indifference so same thing can produce those reactions now suppose the example they give a cuckoo's cry a bird outside it is making sound hmm so suppose an artist is there he will find it very pleasant if he is in a good mood hmm but in the same room if his sick friend is lying down he cannot tolerate any loud noise he will say oh my god shut that bird up hmm it is producing such a cacophony huh yeah. and another person who is neither an artist nor is he sick or he doesn't like birds etc he is completely indifferent whether the cuckoo makes any sound or not it doesn't matter to him so the same thing creates three different reaction means the power of creating these three reactions is in that cuckoo hmm. so similarly they give another example 
rose delights the youth. Youth, when he sees a youth, oh, how romantic, etc., etc. Uh, rejects the dying man. Hmm, the dying man will see, oh, such a beautiful rose, but I will leave the world in a few days. Uh, and leaves the gardener cold and indifferent. A gardener is doing all that every time. For him, rose does not produce any extraordinary feeling at all. That is a part of his job. Hmm. So one object can create these three. Hmm. So Sankhya, according to Sankhya, we have already seen, discussed in detail, their theory that the effect is nothing but the cause in another form. So when these effects are being produced in us because of that object, this means that those three were in that object from before. When it is producing this effect, it must have had the cause from before. And what is that cause? The cause is the three gunas. The Sattva guna produces pleasure, Raja guna produces some other feeling and Tamu guna leads to indifference. So their theory is simple that if each object in the world can produce these three different reactions. There is no fourth reaction. There are only three reactions. So if these three can produce the effect in you, the cause must have been in that object. Otherwise, how did it have the power to produce those effects? From where did it come? It must have been there. Hmm. So each object is composed of those things which have the power to produce pleasure, pain and indifference in us. And what have what are those which have that power? The gunas. Sattva has the power to produce pleasure, Rajas has the power to produce pain and Tamas has the power to produce indifference. Hmm. So, as the cause must contain what is in the effect, we can infer that the ultimate cause of things must have been constituted also by the three elements of pleasure, pain and indifference. The Sankhya calls these three Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. So these three are constitutive of both Prakriti, the ultimate substance and also the ordinary objects of the world. That is the thing. So these are the three constituents of the mind. So just to explain this again in the words of Swami Vivekananda, he says, the mind is in three states, one of which is darkness called tamas, found in brutes and idiots. It only acts to injure. If a person is full of tamas, he will only injure others. Hmm. He will do nothing else. No other idea comes into that state of mind. Then, higher than that, is the active state of mind rajas whose chief motives are power and enjoyment. So I will be powerful and rule others that is the effect of rajas. Then there is the state called sattva, serenity or calmness in which the waves cease and the water of the mind lake becomes clear. Hmm. So, sattva is not inactivity, but actually it is a state of intense activity. Outwardly, it looks may look like tamas. If a person is sitting in meditation, outwardly it may, may look that he is sleeping. But actually, he is in a much higher state. That is a tremendous activity. Like we had discussed the life of Latu Maharaj. 
So sometimes in the daytime, Latu Maharaj used to cover himself with a cloth and just remain lying down. So outwardly it looked that he is sleeping. But he was meditating at that time. So Sattva is not inactivity but actually intense activity because it is a greater manifestation of power to be calm. It is very easy to be uh, excited and uh, what, what we say chanchal. It is easy because the mind's nature is like that, excited always. But if we have to be calm, we have to control that mind. No person who is not uh, able to control the mind can become calm and quiet. Hmm. So actually it requires much greater power to become calm. Swamiji, Swamiji says, the, you are riding a horse. So let the reins go. What will happen? The horse will run away with you. So anybody can do that. Let the reins go. Let the organs go. Let them do whatever they like. But the power is when you tighten the reins. When you tell the horse, no, you fellow, you will go where I want you to go. Hmm. So calmness actually requires much greater power. So anyone can let go of the reins, Swamiji says. But he who can stop the plunging horses is the strong man, which requires greater strength. Letting go or restraining. Hmm. The calm man is not the man who is dull. You must not mistake sattva for dullness or laziness. The calm man is the one who has control over his chitta vritti or the waves produced in the mind. Activity is the manifestation of inferior strength and calmness of superior strength. So these are the three things. Of course, Gunas is a big subject. Last time we had devoted one whole hour to that. But uh, in this context, it is not necessary to give so much time. So we will just conclude the discussion by synopsis of the gunas. I will just share the image with you again. <clears throat> Here you will just have a ideas of the important points regarding the gunas. So here you can see Gunas are constituents of Prakriti. Hmm. They are invisible. They can only be inferred from their effects. So Sattva brings, gives rise to joy. Rajas gives rise to activity. Tamas to passivity, passivity. These can never be separated from one another. And relation of the Gunas is that of constant conflict as well as cooperation. We have discussed that when we discuss Sankhya. And nature of things is determined by the predominant guna. Hmm. And these gunas are constantly changing. And last of all, they cannot be created or destroyed or changed into one another. So tamas in us cannot be changed to sattva. Tamas will remain tamas. But the quantity of tamas can be decreased. And sattva can be increased. So, tamas will not overpower us when it becomes very weak or when it does not exist in that much state in our mind. That is the thing. So, this in short is our discussion of the gunas. And we have discussed in quite a bit of detail this time the impressions which lie in our conscious mind and in our subconscious mind. The conscious mind, the impressions lie only in one form, awakened form, active form. 
but in the subconscious mind they may be dormant they will become active later they may be overpowered for the time being or they may be weak although they are present there but they cannot become active so the work of the spiritual aspirants is to make all the undesirable impressions very very weak and cultivate only good impressions and ultimately gain control over all the impressions so that he can make the mind absolutely calm when the impressions cannot even create a ripple on his mind when there is no wave on the lake then the lake becomes absolutely calm then we see the bottom of the lake similarly our activities of the mind are hiding the soul which is inside we cannot see the bottom of the lake we can just see the waves so when all these waves or chitta vrittis become calm then we see what is behind the mind what is the reality which is the higher self or atman or god or paramatman whatever you call it. so today i hope that uh, it is uh, it is quite clear these impressions which lie in the conscience and subconscious mind and we have only one discussion regarding the mind left after that we will uh, start discussing the yoga philosophy and that is the five states of the mind so when sometimes our mind as mind is distracted hmm sometimes it is calm so all these things we will discuss that is a fascinating discussion they will also be discussed in the yoga sutra so we will leave that for a later discussion so let us stop here today Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Arpanam Rastam